Middletown and stakeholders. Welcome to your 2023 State of the City for Middletown, Ohio. This is my fourth year serving as your mayor and thus my fourth and last State of the City address. I thought I would bring <laughs> Via here to join me for a little bit of this. She's my late husband's service dog and she's been with me through this whole journey serving as your mayor. Okay, Via, we got some business to do. Can you get down? Good girl. As I close up my term, I owe it to Middletown to pass on what I have learned, what I see as the opportunities, the accomplishments that we've made, and where we have opportunities for growth. Middletown was founded on entrepreneurship, big visions, and determination to place our city on the map on a national scale. Our city grew on the shoulders of titans. We have been to the heights of prosperity. We've subsequently trudged through the challenges of economic and social struggles. This generation of Middletown citizens is at a crossroads. We have the ability to choose our city's future, an opportunity I'm gonna circle back to at the end. But before that, I'm gonna provide an overview of where Middletown stands now, where our current focus lie across the city, where we could use improvements, and how we can get there. First, we'll discuss money. Then I'll bucket topics into the East End, downtown, and in between. After I finalize my thoughts about the city, the Middletown City School Board President, Chris Urso, will provide an overview of the state of the schools. All right, let's talk money. The city's bond rating has improved to an AA3 by Moody's in 2022, based on the city's general fund reserves. We replenished that quite a bit. Income tax revenue has grown by 56% since 2013, if you net out the quarter percent uh, added for the street paving levy. Compared to a decade ago, the capital improvement fund spending has increased by around $4 million annually. I will tell you this council has really focused on catching up on a lot of capital improvements that were not so much focused on in the past, which has put us in a great position moving forward. Uh, that number did not include the water and sewer capital expenses, by the way. We are doing more with less, that is for sure, in Middletown. In 2013, the city had 535 employees, so that's 10 years ago, 535 employees, and now we have just above 443 based on the last uh, ACFR filing. Okay, let's talk about the East End and what's going on there. I think you all are well aware by now, Middletown has partnered with Warren County, uh, Water Development and CCP on the largest economic development project in decades in Middletown on about 50 acres on the East End. It's at 122 and Union Road. The leaders of our community, both past and present, really deserve a lot of credit for saying no to a lot of different things that came before us and before them and waiting for just the right project to come along. And we are very lucky that this transformational project is here now. It's currently titled Renaissance Point. And the project's goal is to develop a sustainable, Class A, mixed-use regional asset that benefits Middletown citizens, Warren County, and all of Southwest Ohio. It'll have an event center with three sheets of ice, one of which is convertible for concerts and other events, uh, with an anticipated approximately 425,000 visitors per year. Uh, the, that venue has about a 65% pre-construction lease intent already. The market says this is a very, very viable development and is going to thrive, which is incredibly exciting for Middletown. The development will also have shopping, dining, hotels, multifamily housing, and office space. It will be a first-class eastern front door to Middletown. The most recent public presentation to council was given in July, and I'll put a QR code here on the screen for you so that you can access that if you'd like to learn more. They plan to break ground in late March, early April on this project. And it will definitely take a while. It's going to be done in phases, but it's really exciting for our city. Another exciting development on our east end is the Atticus at Union Road and Market Avenue. There will be approximately 240 multifamily market rate residential units. These are going to be really nice and provide some housing along the interstate. They'll be breaking ground in spring of 2024. This is going to be a great complement to the entertainment complex. Let's talk downtown. Our existing downtown master plan from 2017 had the goal of defining the vision for downtown Middletown as a place where our past, present, and future come together to represent the best of who we are and the best of what we can do. Uh, you can find the details here at this QR code. This 
coupled with the City of Middletown Comprehensive Plan of 2022, which identifies downtown Middletown as a special interest area, uh, lays out strategic objectives. You can find it here at this QR code. Those two different strategic documents is what we use to go about fostering the redevelopment of our downtown. So what's going on downtown? Well, first of all, I don't think anyone can argue that Central Avenue looks absolutely beautiful. What an upgrade. The traffic calming efforts are successful. Uh, I can tell you as a Julie truck owner, I can attest it's difficult to speed going down Central Avenue now. <laughs> Uh, the goal was to slow the vehicle traffic and promote foot traffic in our downtown to help our businesses be vibrant and succeed down there. We were also able to honor veterans, uh, both of the past and present this year, because of the new light poles that were put up. So we had banners of our veterans from Memorial Day to Veterans Day. The strategic effort with the most potential for transformation downtown continues to be the efforts of the historic building renovator Wayland Ventures. We anticipate a feasibility study review in early 2024, perhaps as early as January, regarding the Manchester and Ford Sunshine buildings. If we can get those going, guys, downtown Middletown is going to thrive. At that point, hopefully efforts will then progress to renovate those buildings. Uh, in the meantime, Wayland has also begun the feasibility efforts for the First National Building and the vacant Swallens lot. That is where Holiday Hoopla is currently located. Those are due March 2025, so they have, 20, they have 18 months to work on those, followed by a feasibility effort on a vacant lot uh, loosely referred to as the Smith Park lot uh, close by. That'll be 12 months later. Now, don't worry, we have a nearby location determined for Holiday Hoopla. That brings me to the CSO Storage Basin Project. I'm sure all of you see the massive amount of construction going on at Manchester and Maine. Our city is getting a new beautiful park. Now, it might not look like construction that typically is required for a community park. The project is a requirement under the city's long-term control plan to reduce the combined sewer overflows into the Great Miami River. So your city is making lemonade out of lemons and developing the land into a beautiful park with the ultimate goal of moving Holiday Hoopla Ice Rink under a portion, a small portion of the space, which we hope turns into a year-round skate park of some sort. That would be really cool. So you can find most recent update. I'll give you this link here. That provides a lot of details of the project and the plans and some really great renderings, which you can see here as well. City staff expects the substantial completion of this whole project to be December 2025. So it's not quick, but it is going to be absolutely incredible. With efforts of the community, the SORG Revitalization Group paid off its balloon mortgage this year, and they now outright own the SORG Opera House. This has a lot of potential at this point. They are focused on the preservation of the theater and also the first story commercial spaces so that they can establish some revenue streams uh, that will assist in the additional preservation of the theater, but also the remainder of that commercial building. It needs a lot of work, but it is definitely worth saving. We really thank all the volunteers involved with the historic revitalization group. It's a lot of work that they put in their hearts and souls into Middletown. I look forward to those street level renovations happening because that's gonna mean tenants are gonna be in those spots right there on Main and the SORG building. I've received a lot of questions about the status of the Getz Tower. I know we're all anxiously awaiting the owner to begin construction on that. He has been uh, trying to acquire additional tax credits uh, through many rounds of applications, so we will wait to see what happens there. Let's talk about in between. One of the most important projects our city has going on right now is a neighborhood organizational project. We can learn a lot from history. We can learn a lot from each other. And when we have similar cities of similar demographics, social status, economic potential, find success with an effort, sometimes the best thing we can do is copy, paste. Council Member Farrell and I started working on a copy paste of Hamilton's 17 strong neighborhood project that they're having a lot of success with. Hamilton is using 17 strong to promote neighborhood communication, pride, cleanup, strength, and representation. Middletown Connect, funded by the Department of Health's Ohio Is grant, has started to lay the groundwork for what this might look like in Middletown. I know incoming council member Jenna Carter and incoming Mayor Slamka are both very supportive of the efforts as well as I'm sure the other council members are. I look forward to empowering our citizens to grow stronger and improve Middletown together. City Council has earmarked funds to complete the renovations on the Robert Sunny Hill Jr. Community Center to include a new gymnasium. While the schools 
chose to redirect their funding away from the joint preschool project, the building improvements are moving forward. In fact, we're on track to begin construction in spring of 2024, which will include both inside improvements as well as beautiful facade upgrades. In addition to the gracious levy the citizens of Middletown approved, the city will bond out the remaining money required to build our new fire stations. Uh, there's a lot of debate surrounding whether we should build new, whether we should renovate. The reality is they're woefully out of code. Our first responders deserve better. Should we have attempted renovations on these buildings, the second we touched them to do that, we would then have to bring the entire building up to code, which ultimately was going to cost a lot more money than building the new fire stations, especially considering uh, the savings from purchasing things at scale. So we decided to push forward and bond out the rest of that gap in funding. Construction has begun on the new headquarters and also on station 82. They are expected to be complete by November 2024. So this next year, and then stations 81 and 85 will begin construction in August of 24, with the goal of being complete by June of 2025. The other benefit to the new fire stations is they're going to be more appropriately located around our city based on where our populations have moved over time. All right, Middletown, let's talk housing. We all know there's a lack of housing across the country and definitely here in Middletown. So we have quite a few projects in the works. The preserve at Roosevelt Ridge by Brandon Homes is well on its way toward construction. It's going to include 20 beautiful single family homes, starting with those along Central Avenue. A request for proposals for the former Lincoln School site was resubmitted and closes on the 15th of December. The goal is to find a builder willing to place high quality townhomes on that site as we extend the walkability lifestyle along the east side of Central Avenue past University. The Atticus, as previously mentioned, that's going to include 240 market rate multifamily units on the east end of the city. And Wayland Ventures, when we're talking about downtown and the feasibility, they have discussed the possibility of including market rate senior living as part of the Manchester development. They recognize that that is a gap that we have and our seniors like that walkable lifestyle. So we'll see, hopefully that comes to fruition. Request for proposals for the former Vail High School site uh, is active again. It's going to close on the 28th of December. This is the second bid for the property, uh, which received no bids in the spring of 2023. Uh, I'm personally thinking probably some mixed use development there, but we are gonna see what the proposals come in with. Vacant city owned lots continue to be viable options for redevelopment. Definitely contact development services if you have any questions or interest in this. Sometimes it does require some variances to be made in order to build on some of those lots, but the city is ready and willing to work with builders. The city also owns quite a few residential lots that fell into our possession for one reason or another, and they're working on developing a strategic program to advertise these for purchase, in addition to some of the commercial properties, should individuals or companies want to rehabilitate them. We want to avoid as much demolition as possible. We need to maintain that fabric of our city, the history, the integrity. New construction is never going to match the quality and the authenticity of our city's past. If you have any interest in revitalizing properties in Middletown, please contact the city. If there's a will, there's a way. Next, let's talk about economic development wins. These are some of the most important things we can do as a city. In addition to the Interstate Entertainment Complex and its associated development, the city signed a deal with EI Ceramics, a refractory company in the metals industry, for the purchase of the former AK Steel Research Facility, also referenced as the CERTA site. This is on Curtis Street. EI Ceramics is planning to invest several million dollars to remediate and remodel the property to suit their operational needs. They plan to consolidate their workforce of over 70 employees with an estimated annual payroll, once fully operational, of more than $4 million. This is incredibly exciting. A lot of people talked about demolishing that building. It's really, really cool inside. So much space. It's perfect for this company, and Middletown is excited to bring them here. The city also administered multiple rounds of small business grants through the ARPA funding and continues to work with the Small Business Development Center to support small businesses in many ways. A DMI is pushing for vacant property legislation updates and has its heart set on promoting vacant storefronts for lease or sale downtown. I look forward to their efforts on that. That is a lot of work, but it is absolutely critical in filling our downtown. When it comes to the airport, the city continues to monitor the advanced air mobility industry's future. That's those Jetson-like vehicles. City officials are navigating the network in that industry to hopefully bring the bleeding edge of high tech in the aviation world to Middletown. The remainder of my state of the city, it's going to be a bit blunt. 
It's not going to be a nicely decorated sugar cookie, but it's a cookie nonetheless. It's a cookie that has potential. Potential to become amazing if we first admit that it needs work to get there. There are areas we still need to focus on. Economic development. We must be aggressively, proactively networking in the highest of places, selling our city. We must put the miles in, the phone calls, the text messages, the after hours follow up efforts that fit a potential partner schedule. We must make it easier for businesses of all sizes to start and grow in Middletown. We must be cohesive, work as a team, and can't say not my department. We must enable the young, high performing city employees to work on their projects and their dreams for Middletown and run with them. We cannot wait for the phone to ring, but when it does, we must answer it and we must keep our minds open. Technology. In general, Middletown continues to fall behind the curve on embracing technology. Infrastructure-wise, we're still running on local servers. We should have made the leap to cloud-based hosting for a wide variety of reasons. Staff is aware of this gap, has its eyes set on moving to Office 365 at some point in the future. We're living in the ancient days of tech, and it's keeping us from working effectively, efficiently, and collaboratively. When it comes to cybersecurity, attribute it to what you may, we're not proactive or sufficiently serious about cybersecurity. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to elaborate on that one, but I would like to see improvement in that area. Asset tracking. We fail to recognize the benefits that technology can provide. We got to get with it, Middletown. <laughs> I'm personally frustrated by the pushback that I've received when it comes to vehicle and asset tracking. The potential for efficiencies in public works alone far outweighs any arguments against the technology. We still have no way of knowing where our snow plows, street sweepers, code enforcement vehicles, or any other vehicles requiring regular patterns around our city have covered and when. We continue to hear that staffing levels are short, but we fail to embrace the technology that could make our staffing efforts more efficient. These same technologies can improve the life of our vehicles, saving us money by alerting us when there are maintenance needs. These technologies are nearly always coupled with reductions in insurance costs, safer driving, and overall citizen confidence. For example, where are the city plows? Are they nearing my streets? This is easy, readily available information that many other cities have for their citizens. I applaud the Middletown Police Department for working to embrace shot spotter, the flock license plate readers, body cameras, and other technologies and tools to make their detective work more efficient. Okay, city-owned properties. We are failing to sufficiently maintain many city-owned properties. The most egregious fault we have is the roof on the First National Building. As a city, we have no right to own properties like this with historic significance if we are not willing to maintain them sufficiently. In many cases, we are the vacant property building owners that allow buildings to deteriorate. If we're not willing to maintain the buildings, we must put them in the hands of someone willing to do so. My biggest pet peeve in Middletown is code enforcement. We have got to do better. There's just no question, there's no option. We must do better at enforcing code. It's nothing for anyone to get defensive about. We simply have to step up our game. If you look good, you feel good. Well, we don't look good. As a citizen, if you want to help, because you can, you are a force multiplier, help our city staff with the code enforcement. You can submit potential code violations on a portal. I'll give you the link here. It's called Citizen Serve. Create an account and start submitting. It's also trackable, so you can see the progress of your submissions. Okay, let's talk about public records requests. Our legal team continues to err on the side of refusing records. The records belong to us, the people. If a bank withheld the contents of your safe deposit box, what would you say to that? There are very few reasons to withhold records. We should be welcoming records requests. It means people are interested in our city and what's going on. Instead, we use a tone that nearly shames people when they ask for these records. We also fail to consistently ask staff and counsel for records that may be located on personal phones, emails, computers, social media accounts. If counsel and staff direct the legal team, we can improve these efforts, but it's a slow moving ship for some reason. Uh, it's been ingrained maybe far too long in our city that we withhold as much as possible. The city is the trusted guardians of the records, not the owners. As a public official, I do my damnedest to always say the right things for the right reasons, 
but I'm not perfect either. I am certain a public record exists out there where I agreed with somebody on what a great asset the executive director of Central Connections is for our community. That exists in an email, obviously prior to recent events. Would I want that email redacted or kept back? Obviously not. It's a public record and it documented my work and my thoughts at that point in time. When we agree to serve the public, we take on a massive amount of responsibility, but we take an oath of office to accept that responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility and great accountability. Circling back to the beginning, this generation of Middletown citizens is at a crossroads with the ability to choose our city's future. I see us with two options. One, give in to a lack of pride in our city, mediocre opportunities, a lack of will or grit to change, and allow our city to sit, age, deteriorate, and be torn down, one brick at a time. Or, two, make the shift, believe in ourselves, accept the uncomfortable nature of change, stop making excuses for the blight, the vacant lots, the vacant properties, and the lack of real opportunities. Do we stop making excuses now and start owning our path to success? If you're in the first group that wants to sit idly by, I highly recommend determining your exit strategy out of Middletown because this city is ready and primed to start owning our path to success and return to greatness. Now, we can fist bump, high five, and pat each other on the backs for agreeing that we're ready to push forward, but whose role is it to take the next steps? Whose role is it to call ourselves out for trash and debris everywhere, for improper or broken fencing, for cluttered trash on front porches, for the inattention to noxious weeds growth, for excessive noise pollution, for parking in the grass in the front lawns, for broken windows, for vacant properties, for lack of time and money investment, for lack of business attraction, for lack of economic growth. Whose role is it to follow through with all this? The answer is easy to say, the city. And by the city, 99% of the people mean one Donham Plaza, right here, the city government. Why is that? Because government's always been there for you and proven its success? I highly doubt that. Uh, that would be time for an eye roll. We all know government's inefficient, mostly ineffective means of accomplishing community growth. It has to come from within and from within a willingness to change. As humans, we always want to put the blame elsewhere. We want to find a scapegoat. Whether it's another person or another entity we can point the finger to and blame for a problem, for a reason why we failed, for lack of success, it's easiest to pass the buck and to choose to not personally carry the responsibility for change. I love wholesome video podcasts uh, that I can learn from, educate myself, interact with, and become a better human. One of my favorites is Jocko Willink. He is a former U.S. Navy SEAL. Someone wrote in to Jocko and asked, I'm a chronic excuse maker. How do I stop making excuses and get things done? Jocko responded in a podcast with the following. The chronic excuse maker. How do you stop making excuses? It's actually pretty simple. All you have to realize, all you have to know, all you have to accept is that all your excuses are lies. They're lies, all of them. Think about the things you tell yourself, the things you've used to rationalize. Taking the easy road, taking the easy road and leaving discipline behind. Think about them. You don't have time. That's a lie. You don't have support. That's a lie. You don't have the equipment or the gear. Lies. You don't know the best way. Who cares? That's a lie. You're too old or you're too young. Of course you're too old or you're too young. Lies. And there's, you're too busy. Sure, you're too busy. That's a lie. And you're too tired, and you're too sore, or you're just plain not feeling it. Lies, lies, lies. And the list goes on and on. And it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop. So recognize. Recognize the excuses are not valid. They aren't. They're trumped up, conjured up, and fabricated. They're lies. How do you stop the lies? You stop the lies with the truth. The truth. The truth will set you free. The truth will stand. 
and the truth will deliver you from the procrastination and laziness and the downward spiral that comes with the lack of discipline. So don't believe the lies, believe the truth. And the truth is, you have time, you have the skill, you have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. So cast out the lies, burn them down, and listen to the truth, and live the truth, and go out and get it done. It stops here in Middletown, and it stops now. We are ready for change. We are ready to roll up our sleeves and do it ourselves. We are ready to own this city and our future. And I look forward to doing it alongside you in my role as a private citizen. I'm proud to pass the torch of mayor to Elizabeth Slamka and wish our new fresh council the best in representing the citizens of Middletown. I thank them all for their willingness to serve and I look forward to our city's progress and growth together. I'm sure I'll see you around town in many different places. Until then, blue skies over Middletown. My name is Chris Urso. I serve as the president of the Board of Education alongside my colleagues, Kathy Mulligan, Todd Moore, Verlina Stewart, and Anita Scheibert. I have the privilege to give an update on the status of our district schools. Um, your board is extremely committed to our students, our staff, and our community, and we believe in transparency, making sure our community has a good appraisal of how our schools and students are doing. We, your Board of Education, champion transparency, collaboration, and practical solutions to address the challenges facing our district. Chronic absenteeism, defined as missing more than 10% of the school days, has been a concern. During the 22-23 school year, 44.9% of students in Middletown City Schools were chronically absent, compared to 26.8% in Ohio and 30% nationally. Recognizing that consistent attendance is crucial for students to succeed. The Board of Education is actively prioritizing the identification of solutions, emphasizing collaboration among schools, families, and the community. We are committed to listening, collecting data, collaborating, and responding effectively to ensure the best opportunities for our students' success now and in the future. Reading and math proficiency remain focal points for our students. The district is investing significantly in these areas through high quality professional development for teachers and structured reading and math programs. This strategic approach is yielding positive growth in student performance, aligning with our commitment to ensuring proficiency in these essential subjects. Our Passport to Tomorrow strategic vision is unfolding across grade levels, emphasizing real world experiences within the classroom. The integration of practical applications of learning is a priority, fostering connections between education and industry to better prepare students for their academic and professional journeys. The Ready Now 100 Business Partner Initiative continues to thrive with 50, over 50 partners currently engaged. These partnerships provide invaluable networking opportunities for our students, allowing them to connect with professionals, gain insights into various industries, and build relationships for their future careers. We are actively working towards our goal of involving 100 business partners in this crucial endeavor. Our ongoing partnership with Adopt-A-Class is a source of gratitude for the district, impacting four elementary schools presently with plans for expansion next school year. This program connects business and organizations with our schools, fostering mentorship teams that collaborate with teachers to design lessons. This shared responsibility for education and well-being of our students not only benefits them, but also brings joy and fulfillment to the teams involved. 
In conclusion, the Board of Education remains dedicated to the holistic development and success of our students, actively engaging in collaborative efforts to address challenges and create a thriving educational environment. Your continued support is invaluable as we work together for the benefit of our community's future leaders.